Just just for the web address. So there's there's one of the links that takes you to Square and it says you wish to sign up. They should actually delete that. Where is that? It's, it's on the page. Is it on the registration page for the course? Yes. 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 That's why it's confusing. You should, that is confusing. Should, 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 yeah, well, very you should, should register first to Glenbrook. And when you and when once you register, then, then it takes you off the square for the payment. That's right. You can actually and then, have and then, that everybody registered, I signed them up and they didn't go and pay. And so then I had to spend the next 10 weeks chasing up people who just didn't pay because they didn't get to that. Bit. So this time, you know, what you're doing is. Well, when you click on the submit, when they click on submit, mm -hmm. that button can actually then take you to square yeah. to pay. Yeah. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? That's why you submit. And then people just didn't pay. No, but if you, if you <laughs> have to click submit, once you click submit, mm -hmm. That link would take you to square to sign up. Yeah. Um, you're saying they didn't click submit. Well, don't know. They clicked submit, but then it didn't. Like it, it, we used to get them to register first, then pay. That's right. Yeah. 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 But anyway, yeah, sorry. Let's go back. Yes. Yes. Let's. <laughs> instead of talking about money. Um, I, I can't. It's just I didn't know that. Yeah, so okay. Sorry. That's Sorry. right. You can fix it up and yeah, get the okay. system working. Thank you, Helen. All right. Um, I'm going to pray and then we can have a look at what we're looking at. Oh, welcome. Might want to grab a second chair, Mr. Allen. There's one there. Oh, there's one there. There's two chairs here. Move down one, Luke. <laughs> now, this is being recorded and it will. Uh, if you miss or if you want to think again, if I say something really stupid and it's funny, you can go back on and grab it and put it on the internet and make everyone laugh at me. Um, or I think for those who can't, or for those who can't make it, they'll be watching as well. Welcome. Hello. Good to see you. We're going to start on a break and then we'll have a look at what we're looking at. Heavenly Father, thanks for this time together. We thank you um, for the way that you are in control of history, that the way that you have worked throughout human history um, to reveal yourself, to bring us into a saving knowledge of you through your son, Jesus. Amen. Um, right, just quickly, there is a... Do you want one of these? Yeah, everyone's got one of these? Little welcome to the course. Little welcome to the course. Oh, I've got one. one. We might have it. Yeah, I've got... I left all the extras just there. Welcome to the course. Um, oh, just a little blurb there. It's a core level two for the PPC unit. And we're looking at the first six centuries, so not a lot. Not today. Um, and thankfully, we'll have Nick Hernshaw back from class four onwards to run us through because uh, he was there. Um, but, sorry, that's very terrible. I shouldn't say that. Um, uh, yeah, so just a couple of things. Our aim is pretty much to emphasize our thoughts about the nature and practice of the Christian faith, because history, as much as there are those here who love history, sometimes we can try and reduce it just to names, dates, places, events. But we want to look at what people thought as well. Um, so that's one of the aims to think about the nature and practice of the faith in the first six centuries. A second aim is, well, from that we can reflect on our own church thought and practice um, as we see the, the way the Christian church has developed. And finally, it's for us to enjoy fellowship as we study and talk about these things together. So we have um, the dates with each unit in the book that we'll be revising. Um, when I first advertised it, I said we'd start on June 11th because on my calendar, I'm an idiot, and I just had June the 4th is the long weekend, not June the 11th. But June the 11th is the long weekend, so we are starting on June the 4th, and then the dates are there. 
we take a break during the holidays. And I think it's the 3rd of September Father's Day. I don't know, Helen, because when I planned it, that's what I decided. Yes. I, yes, I made sure. Ten. We've got ten there. Um, and then there's the online exam that you can do as well. Now, you do have access to the online book, but these books are now on my desk at Denver. And so we'll have them next time we meet uh, for those who said they wanted to buy them. If anyone wants it sooner, just come down and see us. Um, oh, Tuesday, I'll be there. Thank you, come Tuesday. Not tomorrow. Not... Yeah, play group. <laughs> uh, and, but not tomorrow because we'll all be at a faithful ministry. Of course. At, uh, oh, it's bit not going to, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Um, it's my day off, so I'm going to. She might be. Um, there are other, other resources there as well as a whole bunch of others. There will be other books recommended along the way, but any historical resources that you might have access to, feel free to share them with us when you have great insight and wisdom and knowledge that is good to share. So, first things first, I've got, I'm going to have, when I'm, I'll be taking us through the first three weeks and I'll have little handouts for us all just because I'm old school and I like having something in our hands. Everyone got it now? No, Luke, no. Look at that, I did the right number and everything. Oh, excellent, all right. So week one is basically an introduction to early church history. And so we'll be looking at a couple of backgrounds. So first question to, Talk about why do you think studying the history of the early church might be a good thing to do? You're all here. Obviously, it's a good thing to do. Why do you think it's a good thing to do? Context. I think the history has got to be a good thing to do. Okay. History's got to be so that's some good context. Yeah. It's not something that we're going to install. It's one that may not be in the Bible. Yep. Yep. I think there's context especially to the New Testament. Um, yeah, it gives us a good context. So. A Bible study on my design, just to look at how it was actually supported through the testimony of at least half a dozen historians that started from about 58 AD, AD onwards. Yeah. So a historian would report on it to 50 AD, Another one, 80 AD, 120 AD, 300 AD. So that gives validity to what you're reading. Yep. And can, you can then justify through fact the things that you're reading by. Yeah. 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 That, that testify to it. So the testimony yep. stands to truth of time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, well, we could go on a lot about why it is a good thing to do. Sorry, I just phrased it in the subjunctive there because I like the subjunctive. Um, so it is a good thing to do. But yeah, in the first instance, it does shed some light um, on the New Testament. But it also, as I've said here, and this is a quote from page 10 in the book, church history enables us to see the challenges and preservation of biblical truth, how those before us have understood their faith, how Christians have lived their faith, and the spread of the gospel and the fulfillment of Jesus' promise that he would build his church. Yeah, so that's on page 10 in the, in the notes. So what I like to do, for those who've never had the uh, displeasure of having me work through these things before, if there's a good quote on one of the pages, I like to include it because they often say things better than I ever did. Um, and so I'll often give you a, a good quote from the notes. Now, um, if we look to the New Testament scriptures, behind the New Testament scriptures, especially the Gospels, you see the backdrop of the Roman Empire. Now, I found a little map um, 
of the Roman Empire of, I think, ranging from 44 BC through to 117 AD. Um, whereas the cool kids do these days, BC. Yeah, 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 it's a common era. Yeah. Anyway, um, does that look right? Does that look like so the in the in the light in the light yellow that's kind of the Roman Empire at the death of Caesar in 44 BC. Then it expands to about 14 AD, and that's the um, light green. And then to 117, they get to Britain and the dark green. Does that look about right, you historians? Oh, I didn't know that they had German, Germania. Yeah, they, yeah. But they lost it again. <laughs> Well, the Roman Empire was huge, obviously. That's pretty much most of the known world, wasn't it? Well, yeah, it's the yeah. known world, known to the West. None of the West. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess there's a whole bunch of people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. But in terms of the scriptures, it was kind of the known world for the Jewish people. So, if we go to Luke 2, for example, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that the census should be taken of the entire Roman world. So, the census took place where Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own. So, we see there's a, an organized government and a structure. So, my first question who knows who Caesar Augustus is? Was? What can you tell us about Caesar Augustus? Well, that would be my name, Fabian. Yep. Not having Julius Caesar, he wasn't a Jewish historian. He was a Jewish Yep. That was his doing. Green. 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 And then, yep. Sorry, not the yellow. It's the light. The light green. The light green. Yep. Yeah. 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 He was okay. the one. Yeah, Octavian <laughs> was the winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my hand. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Tax Roman. Tax Roman. Tax Roman. There's a city in Spain. For one of one of the for one of the better a bit of trivia. Yeah. A city in northern Spain called um called Saragosa, which is named which is named after Caesar Augustus. Oh, All right. Saragosa is said that that's a place to found its own. Oh yeah, yeah. And then the local dialects that's the boat. Oh that's what I call still got it's still got um some of the Roman words. In northern Spain. Yeah, right. So it's kind of halfway between um, San Sebastian and Right. Yeah. That's amazing. So it's an yeah. Very yeah. I, I guess we don't, in Australia, if you never leave the shores, we have no idea of history. Well, we are so young compared to like statues, buildings. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Us Westerners. <laughs> so, my bad. My bad. I'll take that back. <laughs> I was actually went camping in a cave not that like two weeks ago and found some evidence from the people here. Um, but by and large, we don't have massive. I mean, we do have drawings on this, but yeah, it does mean we don't have to look at. The one with the the, the use of Christianity. What? Um, at the time, I think we're talking about it. Um, I don't know what we're talking about. That great era of peace. Yeah. But not really capture our minds, not really expect. Yeah, okay. I remember them talking about that too. Yeah, I forget what it is too. But anyway, there we go. So, massive influence. 
Let's do Caesar Augustus. And so he was the dude in charge during the time of Jesus' birth. Or, yes. Okay. Yes. And so there's a few texts here. So if we could just have some volunteers to look up different ones. Um, put up your hand and tell me what one you're going to look up and read. Okay. Acts 20. Acts 21, sorry. Yep. Do the last one. Do the last one, Acts 19 and 25. Yep. Excellent. Acts 16 and Acts 22. Yeah. One more. Acts 22, Kevin. Yeah. Okay, Acts 22. Awesome. Because what we're looking at um, is just learning about some of the, the biblical witness to the context of Roman rule in Judea at that time. So let's hear from Luke 20, verses 20 to 22. Is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? He saw through their complicity and said to them, Fill me a denarius, whose image, whose image and inscription are on it. Caesar's, they replied. He said to them, Then give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and God what is God's. So, what do we learn about Roman rule at that point? Coinage. They had coinage. And so that was part of their life, and that was even part of their Judean life, paying taxes. Yeah. So we can't just ignore it as if it didn't happen, as, as, in, as what I used to like to do when I was a student, perhaps high school, because I was a bad student. Oh, I just thought history, I don't need to, I can just ignore history because I want to live in the present because I'm a fool. Yeah. <laughs> just thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah, um, the other thing I was thinking about coinage is that um, our grandchildren's, my grandchildren's children don't know what's the When it comes to coins, yeah, it's already, but I mean, they yeah. saw but I hadn't thought that. Is that like it was something we would just take for granted in this very day? Yeah, coins. thing I'm looking at, what's a coin? Yeah, yeah. I never thought that, but that's so true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the stuff in the plate. Well, I'm guessing if the Caesar's head was on it, yeah. I'd be thinking that would be wider than just the local proconsul. It, it's the first book comes, you know, in the, in the era, so all traders could trade with. The same currency and the value, therefore, attributed to items was uh, given to it by the coin. By the coin. Was, was there coins before that? Yeah, yes. Oh, there probably would have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> just to sort of change the It does make a good trade, yeah. All right. Act 16. Who was doing that one for us? Thank you. I thought it was daylight. The magistrates sent their officers to the jailer with the, with the order, release those men. The jailer told Paul, the magistrates had ordered that the insides be released. Now you can leave, go in peace. But Paul said to the officers, they beat us publicly without a trial, even though we were Roman citizens, and threw us into prison. And now they won't get rid of us quietly? No, let them come themselves and escort us out. The officer reported this to the magistrates, and when they heard that Paul and Simon were Roman, Roman citizens, they were alarmed. They came to accuse them and escort them to the prison, requesting them to leave the city. After Paul and Silas came out of prison, they went to the youth's house, where they met with the brothers and sisters and encouraged them to turn to the So what, what light does that shed on Roman rule at the time? Citizenship. Yeah, yeah. Habeas so there was, corpus. Sorry? Habeas Lesser. corpus. Lesser. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, a right to be uh, a, a trial. Right. So you've got your basic civil rights if you're a, if you're a citizen. Is that right? Isn't it a bit like a citizen? Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's I think Lydia was a rich Roman citizen. So. 
But they yeah. had rules around the legal system. Yeah, so they had a legal system, they had yeah. rules, and that's that's what the people in the New Testament are functioning under. Um, and so, yeah, it's good to be able it's good to, well, I guess the more you know of it, the more it makes sense, I guess. So if you had no idea of it, it wouldn't make sense. Well, big deal, he was a Roman citizen. But if you if you can kind of guess, oh, that means something special. Yeah, it makes helps you understand what's going on. All right, Acts 21, 31 to 39. Okay. The whole city was aroused and the people came running from all directions. Seizing Paul, they dragged him from the temple and immediately the gates were shut. While they were trying to kill him, he was reached the commander of the Roman troops, so the whole city of Jerusalem was in uproar. He at once took some officers and soldiers and ran down to the crowd. When the riders saw the commander and his soldiers, they stopped being Paul. The commander came up and arrested him and put him down in two chains. Then he asked who he was, and he replied. Some in the crowd shouted one thing and some another, and since the commander could not get the truth because of the uproar, he ordered that Paul be taken to bags. When Paul reached the steps, the violence of the mob was so great he had to be carried by the soldiers. The crowd followed, kept shouting, away with him. As the soldiers were about to take Paul into the bags, he asked the commander, why don't I say something? Jesus for the Greek, he replied. Aren't you the Egyptian whose father revolted and made 4,000 terrorists out in the desert some time ago? Paul answered, I'm a Jew, that's the same. So this young a citizen of no ordinary city, please let me speak. When he received the commander's permission, they were still in the steps, motion to him. So, what can we learn about what was going on historically then? So, what are you laughing at, Russ? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he had the means. Um, but I just find it interesting that there was a riot. So who do they send? Yeah, the superpower. Weren't they the, like the super first superpower of today? Kind of yeah, because they were... So, okay, so Rome it was part of the Roman Empire. It was an occupied city. Um, so they were... They were the law. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what else do you know about the way it was organised that um, might mean that, oh, I think we'll get on to some of the other ones, but who cares if there's violence in the city? You know, why would you send the soldiers out to worry about that? They want, they want taxes. They don't want violence, they want taxes, so yes. Hey, uh, is running smoothly before yep. working. And yep, true. Yep. They say that Caesar Augustus thought um, not only just the rule of law, but the peace and yes. prosperity that comes with it. So that therefore, if there's any insurrection of any type in a riot, he wanted to quell it. And they had the authority to quell the sort of rebellion. But also, I think the people wanted it. Yeah, 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 the people wanted it too, yeah, mostly, yeah, I guess. But the proconsul too forgot back to Caesar that. His little area was out of control. He'd be kind of in trouble too, wouldn't he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but what would Romans be somebody else? And you can see, I think it's dealing with it. He's actually wrote to the emperor and asked for advice. Yeah. Right to the central to the central government. Oh, yeah. So, you know, he wants to do the right thing. Yeah. Okay. So, from what I understand, they're governed around them today. So the Senate decision making was, uh, apart from sleeping, it was daily. It was daily. I'm going. Okay. I'm going. I didn't know that. Okay. Awesome. All right, where are Acts 22, 22 to 29? Yes. All the Roman citizens, the crowd listened to Paul until he said this. Then they raised their voices and shouted, Rid the earth of him. He's not fit to live. As they were shouting and throwing off their clothes and fleeing dust into the air, the commander ordered Paul to be taken to the barracks. He directed that he be flogged and questioned in order to find out why the people were shouting at him like this. As they stretched him out to flog him, Paul said to the centurion standing there, 
Is it legal for you to flog a Roman citizen who hasn't even been found guilty? In the centurion Burgess, the Emperor Bernard have reported it. What are you going to do? This man is a Roman citizen. The men who went to Paul and asked, tell me, are you a Roman citizen? Yes, I am. And the commander said, I had to pay a big price for my citizenship. But I was born a citizen, Paul replied. Those who were about to question him withdrew immediately. The commander himself was alarmed, realized that he had to put Paul, a Roman citizen, in chains. There's a few interesting things there, isn't there? You want to be a Roman citizen? At that point, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> That's interesting too that you could pay to be a, to, to get that kind of rights as well. I guess you can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had to pay hundreds of dollars to get our permanent residency in Chile. Yeah, yeah. But then others were born there. Yeah, yeah, but too much, too much. So we're still functioning in the way the Romans set up to a certain extent, aren't we? Oh, I guess there's so much that still functioning. What else is interesting about this part? To me, it's interesting that the barracks seem to be the only safe place. Whenever there's a riot and Paul's in trouble, they go rescue. Where do they take The barracks, it seems to be okay. I don't think the jail was always part of the barracks. Um, wouldn't have always been, but it seems that they had somewhere to flog people, um, somewhere to chain people, but that'd be something. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it seems just like, oh, yeah, we'll take them to the barracks because no one's getting in there. Even if the whole town's in riot. That was interesting to me. Just, yeah, yeah. Um, and the other thing that, what, why was a person called a centurion? Yeah. So basically, it was the leader of 100 men. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's interesting that the level of structure, too, just the word appears in the Bibles, and I grew up reading it, going, oh, every girl that's a Roman soldier. But you know, then I found out, actually, no, they're actually the leader of 100 men. Yeah. So I just thought it was a general pleb, you know, but no, they're actually not just one of the human shields. They're, they're the professionals. Yeah, I think what often you hear about the centurion is the fighting one. So then they all need to like. Yeah. Right. yeah. But they're not the sappers, they're like the. They might be ordinary, but they're still in charge of army. So there's, they've got that level of authority and uh, little, professionalism. A little bit of maturity in this one. Because the centurion questions Jesus before Christ. I yeah. wanted to know um, what life there was for him to be the Christian. That's like true. he was. So uh, there's some wisdom and maturity about being a centurion as well. You're controlling 100 men. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In those days, you had to be pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, yeah. So, I'm uh, oh, sorry, I'll get something else. It's something. Yeah. Not that ready. When you look at the Roman soldiers, they, they're actually not Roman. And, um, well, they did get citizenship. Yep. And, uh, yeah, just uh, yeah. So, so the the Twenty-five years. Twenty-five years. Well, was, uh, six years. Yeah, basically, the last. Then you were given a plan for the land somewhere out in the. Who uh, knows? You know, in England. Well, it's for security. Yeah. 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 So, I oh, just the commander then wasn't, he had to pay, so he wouldn't have been. That's right. So, yeah. what would, what, what nationality would you say? Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere, yeah. everywhere that the Roman, yeah. the Roman Empire yeah. took yeah. over. Yeah. Understand why, because he was British. Right. 
you open the door. And I, I carefully reminded him that perhaps one of your ancestors was related to a Roman soldier who was making fun. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Right. He still didn't like it. He still, he still didn't like it. Didn't <laughs> <know. But> I'm <laughs> British. I'm <laughs> got an Irish friend that said that the way he was horrified that he was half English. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to say that. Fair enough. You're half English. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, and lastly, Acts 19, briefly, and 25. Sure, well, spoke context is yep. the riot in Exodus. Yep. All right, so yep. Demetrius is put like, you know, Paul's calling for the problem. Yep. Because Demetrius is a silversmith, and he's knocking out these trinkets, and there's a big trade around that. Yep. Paul's come in, and the Ephesians are going, like, well, that's not going up. So Demetrius' trade has come down. So that's the context. So yep. if you look at Verse 38. It says, if then Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a grievance against anybody, the courts are open and there are proconsuls that can press charges. And then the other one is oh, sorry, what's a proconsul in that point then? Administrative type role in the yes. hierarchy. Yep. Yep. And 25, 9 to 12. Um, <coughs> uh, so Festus, wishing to do the Jews a favour, said to Paul, are you willing to go up to Jerusalem and stand trial before me there on these charges? Paul answered, I am now standing before Caesar's court where I ought to be tried. I have not done any wrong to the Jews, as you yourself know very well. If, however, I am guilty of doing anything deserving death, I do not refuse to die. But if the charges brought against me by these Jews are not true, no one has the right to hand me over to them. I appeal to Caesar. After Festus, Festus had conferred with his council, he declared, you have appealed to Caesar, to Caesar you will go. Down to the high court. Down to the high court. And he had the right to do that. But it's just fascinating that the system of government was so, uh, well, so well organised that um, he could do that. And that's the whole... I think sometimes we take for granted, especially when you're reading Acts, uh, reading the, the Gospels or the New Testament. We just take for granted that it's just an organised. He's living there and he wanted to be a friend of the Jews because he wanted to have good reports back to Caesar, so he's dead. So he could do his job basically. Yeah. I think Gary, what I get from Gary and Lisa, that 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 knows me at the moment is very evident in all of this. Caesar was asked to try to um, um, establish many of the charts, council was the second of the empire. There were rules, they were forced prior to this, it was pretty unconscious to try to yeah. Yeah, yeah. The bribery was a big problem. Yeah. You know, the whole so this period was sobered. Of, you know, the rules were there and they were enforced. Yep. And the rules have to take relatively Oh, we're going to get there. Yeah, we're going to get there. That, that's, where we're, that's where all this is leading. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's interesting. In chapter three, we'll go to Rome. It's interesting. Yep, 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 and that's where that's where that's where this unit, first unit is heading towards. It's yeah, you know, no, 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 please keep going. But I'm just saying, you guys are one jump ahead. That's where that's where, part of where we're going. So, all right, we're thinking about the Roman Empire, Roman government. If we can just switch gears a little bit and think about the Roman religion. So, because it was very tied up with the empire, was their religion and the way they, what, what their religious rights were like. What, what do we know about? They had their, they had their, uh, I'm not saying they're down to serving the other people, but serving the line. As long as you paid homage to that person, you could be in the ministry. Yep, that was part of that. Yep. Um, who was the first um, Caesar that claimed divinity? 
Was it Augustus? No. So I think I think Octavian was the first one that actually claimed deity kind of thing. But what else about the Roman religion? What else do they, what else do we know about it? They could they could have been yeah, they were household gods. They were very I think because they the Romans actually they called Christians angels. Yes. Because they needed a physical representation of their god. Yep. They did, didn't they? Yeah. And so that's why they were calling them atheists, because they didn't have the. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they also sort of were with. Um, so they were with the you gave them Roman names. Yeah, yeah. I read about that in Percy Death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Sorry, it's a kid's novels. Yeah, yeah. And I think the thing that was sort of relatively stable was what happened to the people who were in the Yep. In what way? Well, it's, it's within the Roman Empire. Christians were the Yeah. Is that is that the case? Um, I don't, I don't, know, I don't think so. But because of, that was a real, it may have because it would have been so shocking. Yeah. Somebody once said it was just like you know, if we had a moose, you wear a, a moose around your neck or an electric chair, I mean, because that was their method of. Called execution. That's like they're trying to put it in today's terms and going, oh, yeah, do you wear your chain with an electric chair or a hangman's noose on it? Because that would have been the offensiveness of it. Um, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if it would have been, maybe they were doing it because it was so. What are you doing? Well, let me tell you about Jesus. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't tell you. Thankfully. I always thought there was something cool. Well, at least because they had their major gods, didn't they? But then there were also sons minor of, gods sons of, and sons of and kids, you know, kids gods, they gods too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then they had demigods so, and yeah, they, they had the ones that yeah, out of earth. Yeah, and they get your little demigods. Yeah, but you also have your main gods, your lesser gods, yeah. and then oh look, they it's a new god from somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So it was very effective. Yeah. Um, Roman war, war blues. Yeah. It's close to the it's a bad Roman soldier dog. And God made him war. He was born in his faith. He talks about all his colleagues, he's Christian. He said, I say as a Christian, he worships a fish. Oh, yeah, because they did that. Nice. Nice. Fair enough. <laughs> I like it. Um, yeah, yeah. But basically, also, wasn't the religion like part of your, it was culture. It was part of the culture. So the way they did things and their, cult, their rights and things, it was just part of the culture. It's what you did. I don't think sometimes it mattered what you believed. Can I ask you, yeah. being a missionary, do you think that's a, is sometimes missionaries make a mistake of passing on their culture rather than their culture? Absolutely, it has in the past. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We're, all part of, we're all victims of culture. Right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, and that's why in our six months before we went, that's now all they're going. You got to put that aside. You're not proclaiming this is what Christianity is. You're not importing Christianity. That you're going there, listening and understanding that culture, and then seeing how Jesus works in that culture. Um, but because absolutely, what it meant to be a Christian was to live the way I lived. Nothing about what you believe. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, and you see that actually, uh, I don't want to get too sidetracked, but you see it in Latin America. Um, and you see, well, it kind of gives you an, a, an insight into what Romans did when they came and conquered and just incorporated the local deity into their system. The Catholic cathedral in Santiago you know, has this little access. 
there were, I forget what they're called, little side rooms. One of them had was dedicated to Mary, but it was Mary. Of course it was. They're all like that. Yeah, yeah. But it was Mary with all the Aztec sun god stuff behind her head. So instead of like for the halo, it was all the 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 yeah. indigenous yeah. sun worshipping stuff in the gold all around it. Yeah. So it all points to Mary. Yeah, and so it's just, oh, you will incorporate all your symbols yeah. and everything. So it was interesting that in one of the censuses in, in Chile, there was more people believed in the power of the evil eye than God. Oh, yeah, because that was part of their culture that was incorporated mm -hmm. into Catholicism. You know? So there's, you, you see a lot of trinkets if you travel that's with, with eyes. That's the evil eye that's on the one that is no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 still seeing eye. Yeah, I don't know. No, no. I don't know, but there's, there's eyes. There's Cyrus. <clears throat> no, yeah. Anyway, that's a, that's a little sidetrack, but... But the religion was pretty much just the culture, not really based on what you believe. Um, to, to some extent, we can never totally. I mean, I understand it totally get it. We sit around and we have a meal together. We, it's actually our culture there. Yes. We're already starting to start. Yeah, and so absolutely. And part of how we live with Jesus our Lord is to live in our culture with Jesus as our Lord. You know, so it's not like you have to create a new culture that's a Christian culture. No. Where you are, you live in that culture with Jesus yeah. as your Lord. And I kind of think there's something about me that likes the idea of the Aztecs in, in Mary. Not because I'm not talking about truth, I'm talking about culture, but that um, it's more understanding the difference, isn't it? Yeah, they, yeah. If, if you brought some of your culture, but you actually saw that that's just the way we live, that this is the truth. Yeah, yeah. You know, but we don't. Like we, yeah. we go off on to yeah. Yeah. In Africa, they still today have witch doctors in some communities, but they will also go to church. Yep. So oh, there's yes. a side by side, yep. um, you know, that so no lady who still goes to Africa and treats children with burns because if something bad happens to them, usually the child is the one that's put the devil. Yep. They actually push them into the fire and have burn burns. Yep. So they're still living, but they go to church. So they've got this duality of custom and culture versus Christianity. And so at that point, you then need to, that's why, that's why we're here and we're doing what we do, so we can think theologically about our culture and stand up where our culture goes against what Jesus well, would have us do, you know? Yeah. Um, we'll look at our current culture, how counterculture is for Lots of things. What do you call it? A democratic Christian nation where you know, the religion is becoming a, a minority. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, yeah, so yeah, it's good to be able to critique our own lives as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But if you're running an empire, Put in the boat. It's just needed to form that compromise that I'm not able to do it. Order. 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 Oh, yeah. There's no law and order. No law and order. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so as the empire spread with all this um, and the population not only spread, but it kind of moved towards, correct me if I've got this wrong, you historians, moved towards cities and major centres um, of trade and industry as it started. You know, what was, what, would have been some of the implications of that, like for the people. Tax, yeah. yeah. So, going from a subsistence to a, a major city, yeah, yeah. Being up in the being caught up in the big wheels of, But also that means that you're not just growing up. 
with your little community, with your related to everybody, mm. all of a sudden, there's a whole different mix. People have opportunities. Well, people, a lot of opportunities for intermarriage from from Britain and the Iberian Coast. Yeah. 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 It is part of the Jewish experience. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And the sharing of ideas. Yep. Uh, and the Yes. Their experience is the same to cultures now that it's worse to take. Also the benefits that people see yep. in the city. Well, it's in transportation, like I said, the sharing of ideas across cultures. So if someone can do it better, like building Roman roads, then that's what they do. Mm. And all viaduct systems and plumbing and all that all that social structure that ends up developing as the city starts growing. Um, and the sharing of ideas across cultures. Mm. Yeah, I never realized how much Rome had gave us until what was it, Monty Python? Monty Python. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's the Romans done for us? Well, this, this. Well, apart from that, well, this, this. Well, apart from that, yeah. <laughs> I should have put that in my presentation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 little clip. What are the Romans doing? Google, just put it in my What are the Romans doing? It's actually a Christian British comedian. Yeah. It was about 15 years ago, that one. But he did the same thing with Christianity. He so said, What's Christianity ever done for us? Apart, <laughs> apart from, from a part from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. All right. Okay. So that's a bit of Rome, Roman background. Okay. Let's, let's move, change gears to a bit of background to the Jewish culture. Uh, I have my favorite quote from this section, page 19. It says, Judaism, by its very nature, abhorred non Jewish people. Well, that's not going to work in the Roman. Um, People, religion, and influences. The law of Moses required a community free of foreign contaminations and Jewish nationalism was strong with expectation of the delivering Messiah who would establish a Jewish kingdom. Despite Rome's usual respect of Jewish sensibilities, Jews bristled at Roman dominion. <laughs> uh, that was just, I just thought that was a great quote. Exactly. What are the Romans doing? Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> yeah. well, the Jews were the ones that, like we yeah. should be in charge. Yeah. We we can yeah. This whole intermingling thing was just you know abhorrent. So we can speak in general terms about the Jewish people at the time of the birth of Jesus, but there were various parties or sects within Judaism that had particular emphases or particular goals. Now this is all in the notes, so I'll just give it to us because rather than just us going off a bit. Basically, you had the high priests who basically under Roman rule had become nothing more than a political spokesperson uh, for the Jewish people, which was not the way that the law was given to Moses for. The Sadducees uh, were often the wealthy, often the ultra-conservative religious views, but that included no resurrection. And my favourite dad joke, they didn't believe in the resurrection. That's why they were sad, you see. Come on. I've made that joke before and I'll make it again. And I'll make it again. Uh, the Pharisees, they were committed to re establishing Jewish rule. So they were much more political, you know, hardline. hardline politically. They resisted Hellenism, like that's the, the, the Greekness. Hellenism is basically Greekness. That's my way of saying it. Um, they were very devout to the law. I remember Paul himself was a Pharisee of Pharisees. Very, kick everything according to the law. The Sanhedrin, um, basically under Roman rule, they then became kind of the council that ran the Jewish community. They resumed control of eternal affairs and justice. Yeah, well, that, that, that was the thing, wasn't it? So oh, that's a problem with your Jewish culture. Go to the Sanhedrin. We don't, you know. And then they'd go, but we want to kill them. Oh, well, that's something that Rome has to do. With so that's the root, Jesus. That's the root, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. 
we want to knock them out. We can't do that. We want to we want. Exactly. Exactly. And so yeah. even under Roman rule, this was part of the, mm -hmm. the Jewish. Now, the Qumran, who knows much about the Qumran? Oh, they were in. They're sinking. Just by instinct. Oh, yeah, they're in your spread. That's another goal. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. 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 Dead Sea Scrolls. Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah. yeah, so they kind of were like monastic yeah. almost. Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, they kind of separated yeah. themselves. Like, yeah. Well, they consider themselves yeah. the Jews of the Jews. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they were great students of all the ancient writings. And and the fact that it had nothing to do with yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear that at all? No, not a lot. No, all the sort of you see, yeah. yeah. And the zealots. Yeah, that's because they just removed themselves from that society. Yeah, yeah. And then you got the zealots. They were like the Pharisees, but they were willing to take up arms. Um, and some suggestions Barabbas may have been one of the. That's why he was in. That's why he was being put to death. Because he was one of the people involved in the riots and uprising. I guess reasonably my problem with the successor. Because I knew him. Sympathetic. Is that also. Yeah, but is that also. Maybe it was one of the uprisings like that. Yeah, yeah. That would have been a, quite possibly this group. Within the Jewish community or culture, that were really zealous for revolution. Did you see people's fun? Okay, yeah, we're going back to Monty Python. No, let's not go there. Okay, then there was this other thing called the diaspora. Who knows what the diaspora? Or who remembers dispersion? Yep. And what were some of the physical or practical results of dispersion of Jewish people? Christianity gets spread. Well, we get there. Yeah, right. Christianity gets spread. But there were Jewish people. All, 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 all over. Yeah, yeah. All over the Roman world. All over the Roman world. So. Yeah. Well, te te technically, we're the... The ten pound palms, what are you saying? Excuse me, I'm not. We've had our own one. Okay. <laughs> we, got, we got paid by the University of New South Wales, first class. <laughs> if you can so get it. Did they do that on purpose? You know, like, what was the testament? No, they didn't do it on purpose. They were forced out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they got kicked out of one city. Yeah. And they, they got first to be in that one. Yeah. So sort of spread out. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. All right, so we're getting there. Let's move now then to the background of Greek thought. Yeah, so the in in the Greco-Roman world, so basically before Rome, before the Roman Empire, I just lost the name. Anyway, the Greek language, the Greek thought had a bigger influence. Um, and so, but still even in the Roman Empire, that that background to that was, yeah. there was still the Greek thought. It was, it was, yeah, yeah. So Greek was still very much part of what was going on. So, I mean, you've got your Roman Empire, you've got your Jewish community, but you've also got Greek thought. These are all the things in the melting pot of the context of the New Testament. Um, and what do you know about Religion in the Greco Roman world, kind of thing. It's again, it's similar to what we're saying. They had their own gods, they had their hierarchy of gods. Well, the, the, Jews, the, Jews, the Jewish religion was different. Monotheism was weird, yes. Yeah, yeah. You didn't actually see a moral component. Yep. Yeah. Um, anyway. There's a few more details in the notes about the Greco-Roman religion, but we can move on. But we see in Acts um, 17 um, that while Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jews and God-fearing Greeks, 
as well as in the marketplace, day by day with those who happen to be there, and a group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to debate with him. So Greek philosophy was still a religion for many. Um, actually, it still influences pretty much all religions to this current day, Greek philosophy, um, including the Roman Catholic Church, including a lot of Christianity, well, also Protestant. Protestant Christianity. Yeah. I mean, sorry, you're going to say... I just something. read something. Once it said that uh, once we got into the once Christianity spread beyond Jews mm -hmm. uh, into Europe, that the number of people whose first experience and who were more in contact or the knowledge came more from Plato, yes, uh, rather than from the Jewish experience where they had more experience of the Jewish uh, scriptures, so yeah. that great sort of quite an interesting development. Christianity. Absolutely. Yeah. And so um, Socrates, I guess, was following Plato, wasn't he? Or Plato following Socrates. Plato following Socrates. Socrates, yeah. But his two worlds or his two forms of idea really led to our ideas of heaven and hell. And also, um, or even, sorry, of even earth and heaven. Yeah. And heaven's the perfect place and earth's just a shadow. Kind of. So that's Platonic philosophies behind a lot of our assumed ideas. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and so where, I don't know, whether I was a kid or I was taught when you die, your soul goes to heaven. And it separates the soul from the physical because that's the pure and the unphysical because physical is bad. Comes in. That's a platonic distinction. That's not actually in the Bible, but anyway. So it lies behind a lot of our assumptions still. Anyway, but it mentions Epicurean and Stoic philosophers. So let's just have a little think. Um, Stoicism, it's founded, I've got a little picture, found a little picture of by Zeno in about 313 BC, where reality, all reality is open to rational explanation. And this universal reason is called logos, which is the Greek word for word, and which is what's taken up in John, saying Jesus is the word. And so Jesus is for them the rational explanation of all reason. I think so. Um, yeah, yeah. So it, it's like Christianity takes what people are thinking, go, no, actually, this is Jesus, and it, or reinterprets or uses their language to explain who Jesus is. Um, anyway, so it was, yeah. But this is Stoicism, and there is no personal God, pantheism. So there's lots of gods, it's not a personal God. And ethics um, was an obligation, but it was an intellectual, not a practical exercise for Stoicism. So these days, what do we mean if we say somebody is Stoic? You just take it on the chin because reality is there and got nothing to do with it. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that. Hey. Yeah, well, you don't. Um, your feelings don't matter. You know, it's all rational. You know? Or irrelevant. Yeah, they're irrelevant. They're not part of it. Every day Um, so all this is in the notes as well. So I've just summarized the notes here. Epicureanism was found by this bloke, Epicurious. Sorry? Live for today. Yeah, yeah. Yep, that's it. Basically, it ends up in hedonism. Yeah. That's why there's a lot of restaurants called Epicurean. Oh. Epicurean restaurants. Because it's for the. You indulge yourself now. You indulge yourself now. Because tomorrow doesn't matter. Oh. Yeah. Food was not good. Food was not good. I think it was that. I can eat everything I want. Oh. Yeah, so that, no, that's <laughs> when you get when the epicureans are often used in reference to food. Yeah. Okay. Like, so, you know, you know if people describe if you, if you describe somebody in the industry, the hospitality industry, the epicureans are really the highest form of food. food, food. And it's closely related. Yeah, yeah, well, because yeah, there's no. It's, it's, I mean, I think MasterChef's boring. Yeah, because there's no future. 
There's no future beyond death, so no. you just live for now. Hey, live for now. Chuck yeah. the best in yeah. right now, yeah. Yeah. All that sort of chefs, celebrities, celebrities. Yeah, celebrity yeah. chefs. I mean, yeah. I, I live with the celebrity chefs. Yeah, I live with myself. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a, there's a yeah. movie, there's an art, there's a very a movie I first saw many years ago called The Wrong Book. Oh, yeah. Which is, a, which is effectively this, in a nutshell. These guys, their their whole purpose in, in being an artist is to keep themselves prepared. Wow! And, yeah. they, and they did that. They successfully did. And they should, they were so yeah. succeeded. Well, a friend of mine, his doctor congratulated him. Said you've done well. You've achieved it. Finally, you've got diabetes. All those cakes. Well done. I've been telling you for years that this is where you're heading. That you've made it. Well done. And, yeah. <laughs> Um, yes, wouldn't it have been good to hear the debate between Paul, the Stoics, and the Epicureans, uh, like the fellows of Epicurean? That would have been a great debate to listen to. But we don't have it recorded. But that would have been interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then the first century also saw the rise of this middle Platonism, um, which was kind of a blend of Stoicism, blend of Plato. Um, Aristotle, all those kind of ideas put together. Um, and on page 26, I wonder if I have this. No, I don't. Um, Plato, oh, I'll write in the notes. Plato's idea of perfection became thoughts in the divine mind, logos, totally transcendence, and direct knowledge of God was impossible. That's kind of like the middle of Platonism. He actually can't really know God, um, is where it kind of ended up. So that was. Yeah. So all of these things have been leading us to um, this point, which is in church history exams, a, the most common question is, from a historical perspective, in what way can it be said that Christ came into the world at just the right time? Now, and I say this is very common because every exam in church history that I've ever seen, or even in Chile when we're teaching at the church, if it, if it wasn't an essay, it was in the exam. Um, but anyway, I've, I've thought, I'll put together tables, because I like a table. Uh, in case you don't know, I like a table. It helps my brain organise ideas. You don't like tables? You hate tables. I, well, I think because my dad's a supervisor, and I don't like people. Because they like tables and you hate them. Well, it's a community way to summarise stuff in those contexts, which is a problem. Yeah, it is. That's what I'd argue. Okay. But he made me do them because he wasn't a lot of going to do so I hate <laughs> Okay. Well, well, okay. Here's your challenge. You find a better way of summarising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, it's called, it's an called, answer to the question. It's called narrative. Narrative. No, okay. No, it's a story. Okay. It's true. Yeah, no, that's, that's true. Problem. That's, that's the problem. problem. Yeah. You got to do something. True. Yeah. And so looking at all these different things, we've already come up with a, a few, you already come up with a few things. You know, because of Rome, there was peace and stability, trade and communication. So what better time for Jesus to arrive for his message to be able to go out? You know, what better context? Um, it was safe to travel. So missionaries weren't going to go, it was less likely that they're going to get killed as they would have been before Roman mm -hmm. rule. Kind of thing. Um, there was a common currency, so missionaries could travel and still survive and support. And, and even you read in the New Testament where one church was giving support for Paul, so he could be over on the other side of the Mediterranean, but their money was still valid. I think so. The common currency helped that way, or they would give for the poor in Jerusalem from, you know, Ephesus or wherever it was. Yeah, so that helps. Um, Again, a wider exchange of ideas so that, and we're going to look at this next week, um, the gospel of Jesus could go out to the ends of the earth because they were into exchanging ideas. Even Paul in the Areopagus had, was able to stand up and speak because they were into this exchange of ideas. The Romans, they loved it. Um, common language made it easier. Well, Greek. I don't know when that came. 
or Romans. Intellectual is a thing, and the uh, intellectual is a thing. You mean just in Greek? Well, even there's there is quite a number of solid arguments to say that the the Bible that Jesus actually was reading, quoting from, was the Septuagint, was written in Greek. And so when people were hassling me about only doing two weeks of Hebrew at uh, college and saying, why are you over? I'm like, it was good enough for Jesus. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, also justice, security, there's a traveling population, which meant it was spread over ideas, but there was also this expectation of peace. Um, as you were saying before, it's like this. Ah, you know, it, it brought people wanted they, that expectation of peace. And so into that, you bring the idea of Jesus bringing peace with God. And it was kind of just at the right time. Um, in terms of Judaism, there were synagogues throughout the region because of the diaspora. So the, the Jews were spread, but so they set up synagogues um, and that provided a place to preach the gospel. And we also read how there were Greek-fearing, God-fearing Greeks, not Greek-fearing gods, <laughs> God-fearing <laughs> Greeks who were gathering at synagogues. And so people who are looking for the truth about God are there. What better? You know, Christ came into the just at the right time in that sense, historically speaking. Paul went to the synagogue first, didn't he? Every time he went to the synagogues, and if there wasn't one, he went to the place where they were praying. Yeah. Um, and the appeal of Judaism could lead to Christianity, but the divisions in it that Christianity did away with were not appealing. Um, yeah, so we saw the sects and that kind of thing as well. Oh, but also, so the divisions in the Jewish culture was um, there were the Jews and then the Everybody else, there was the free and the slaves. There were the men, and there were the women, and Christianity did away with those, which the Jews didn't particularly like or appreciate. Um, uh, the good thing about the Judaism, though, was that Christians initially shared the legal protection because that was just seen as a sect of Judaism because they were still proclaiming one God. They were saying that Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. You know, he was the king of the Jews. So it's like under the Roman laws, we still had that protection to be able to proclaim and preach and live that little religion. So right time for it under Roman and Judaism. Um, there was the availability of the Old Testament Greek, like I said, it's probably the one Jesus used. So I can... Why is it called the Old Testament? Um, the 70. Um, what was it? Yeah, I think it was the 70 Jewish scholars that theoretically, theoretically translated it. Yeah. 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 Jewish scholars. Uh, and also because of the dispersion of Christians amongst in the Jewish. But, um, Jesus came into the world just at the right time, historically speaking, because of the Greek heritage, or how can that help? There was an empire-wide use of the Greek language, so the missionaries didn't need translation, and they were already had philosophical and theological vocabulary with which to explain Jesus. So I mean, you see Paul in the Areopagus um, using that. Um, then the philosophers had exposed the moral degeneracy of traditional gods, so it's kind of like, oh, yeah, you just do the right thing by them and you can, like a vending machine kind of God. Or even, you know, this God was drunk, he came down, oh, had sex and had little demigods. It's like, Isn't that just already known? Yeah. Yeah. So much of it, so it's fasting, I guess. yeah, but philosophers already said, this is terrible. And so when I came proclaiming, this is terrible. Oh, yeah. Um, 
but also um, if you could say, if, if you could offer union with a deity and not just have be a slave to a deity, that was something huge and different because people were wanting that assurance and wanting that relationship rather than just yeah, slaves. Some of them all were that just. Yep. How much of this was Paul thinking? Yeah. I don't know, but um, it's, in hindsight. it's in hindsight. We can, yeah, yeah. Probably not a lot, um, but well, he was part of that. He was part of that whole thing, but it's just when you're talking church history, you know, you want to say, hey. Look, historically speaking and sociologically speaking, this was this was a perfect time for the gospel to come to be spread uh, in the history of the world or that world at that time. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's only one section. That's one section. <laughs> that, that's a chapter. Not even that one. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Well, it might be, might be one. But that's why I said for an undergraduate, this is an essay question. Pretty much, yeah. or or an exam question. Just, yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah, but so you, you just wrote that as a narrative. That's a big. That's a big essay. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, you 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 pull one point from each of those sections. There's your three paragraphs. There's your there's your exam. Yeah, I'll pass. That's Henry <laughs> well, hang on, hang on. There's a pass, and then there's a pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Me, me, yeah. Me an exam. Do I... A good good exam question is which of these is the most important. Better exam question. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, know, you could explain why that is and why it isn't. And so, yeah. 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 Very cool. I like it. Don't tell them your college. Why? Because they'll, they'll invite them again. They probably have already, but they might get new, new exam questions back to them. They might. Yeah. They might. I'll, I won't send this to them. I think, too, that. Uh, what, what is not mentioned there is the fact that you've got those three governing or three um, cultures mm -hmm. where Christianity is cross cultural. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you didn't have to know. You became a Roman citizen, you had to remember the 12 gods and the 67 other gods. You know, mm -hmm. or if you lived in various areas where Christianity was able to spread because you had. Uh, was able to be understood by everybody. Mm. And you didn't have to know the Roman culture to be a you know, to be a Roman citizen, but to be a person to be a Christian, it was transcendent of all cultures. Mm. That's true. That's why it and that's why there, of course of the expansion of the Roman Empire, you've got cross cultural issues. Yeah, Rome was doing its thing. Spain was doing its thing. Asia Minor was doing its thing. This is just cross cultural. Mm. Across all of it. Mm. So it spread, it would be a bottom point for all of it, is because of the fact that it crossed over into all cultures. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so that was kind of the summary of where the first chapter was heading us towards, um, which kind of highlights the importance of, well, but. Yeah, the importance of getting some kind of understanding for what was going on so that when you read them, you just go, you know, you know, you have that context. So it's very important. But each week, if we can get through things, I'll, I'm going to have a bit of a um, nick off, nick some of the other questions. Um, if we don't have time for it, that's fine. But we could always think, okay, let's think about now. And so I'm going to have a reflection or a question over coffee um, that we may or may not get to. It doesn't really matter. But just to think, what might be some things in our contemporary culture that might aid the spread of the gospel in the next 10 years? WWW. WWW, <laughs> www the internet. Yep. And AI. Oh, AI. Oh, is that going to help? No, no. Chat GP. Chat GP. Now becoming a philosophical thing. That we're talking about the dates of AI oh, okay. and about what it is to be human. So people are 
start to get further philosophical again. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's inevitable. You can't stop it. Yeah. Uh, but, but even but even the best minds are saying we need to put a handle on it at the moment. Mm. And uh, stop and think philosophically. Stop okay. and think philosophically. Oh, yeah. right. I'm Got right, the 10 questions you've got. Yeah. And you've got it wrong. You've got it oh, wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Awesome. Totally, absolutely. Two. Yeah. 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 Excellent. <laughs> got it wrong. Excellent. In fact, if I had given that one a five in a batting car with that second one, wrong killer. Wow. Wrong murderer. Wow. <laughs> that badly wrong. Yeah. 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 But the thing that I was just about, thanks for the comments. Potential trade resources and farmers. So, Australia, India, mm -hmm. so, uh, who knows the most countries? Even China. I think social isolation is going to be over the next decade, people working from home. Um, yes, they have contact with their family, but there's not a sense of community. Mm -hmm. um, so you've got people um, segregated, living in their homes. Who knows all their neighbours? Yep. A, a lot of people don't know their neighbours. Um, and so, so Christianity might be able to yes, help if that need of bringing people together. That might be an opportunity. It's well, well, I see it as that. Yep. Um, and that's why junior drivers and those things work is because you actually bring together community and people start talking and mm. gaining friendships and building that community as church was many years ago. Mm. Yep. But also the lack of, I think, <laughs> the lack of morality and uh, things that are out there to entertain us, the Epicureans, you know, mm. it, it, it's fleeting. I think people are going to be hungry for something more meaty, meaningful. Yep. Jackie, what do you think? So I look at, say, our services like Nicola, mm -hmm. preaching it. And it's ever expanding to be preaching. So it's looking at the church. It's probably what I'm to see. 10 or 15 years ago, those services were looked much smaller than they are. Now the government relies on those services to mm -hmm. provide food and shelter for a lot of people. So 20, 20 odd years ago, 30 years ago, that really wasn't evident. Mm -hmm. So yeah. our culture now is embraced, you know, the churches provide people amongst the poor. You know, not profit organisations that provide the right well, even with our, the Mars group, the exactly. know, support, yeah. the refugee support, yeah. Yeah. the government's going, we'll yeah. send you people. Yeah. And, well, that's, that's an opportunity. That's the contemporary, that's a contemporary culture, and that's an opportunity for the gospel, surely. Yeah. It's not always a good thing, I'm sorry. No, no, absolutely. Just, absolutely. Just, uh, but I agree. A reality. I mean, like, you know, a lot of... So, so yes, yeah, it's a story. But what you said about Anglican care, I mean, I'm with the flood with it. And I'm, I'm absolutely amazed about how the rich people are and living by charity. Mm -hmm. And how, and the other one is for the USL. Yep. People coming into, into church and people Muslim saying, there's no way you could have them. You could be happy Muslim. Yes. Or, you know, just to make it kind of people on the whole, people now, it's all about me, it's, you know, mm -hmm. what I can get for myself. And you can see people doing things that are not for their self, but for the people. Yeah. The the yeah, the challenge that philosophy is that it's all about me, which is what the, the talk about Epicureanism and yeah. helping people to so challenge that, which is so challenging. Yes. And, and, and to say, this is what Jesus, this is who Jesus is, mm -hmm. he's not for that. Really. Yeah. 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 Well, I found a lot of people about I don't think we talk about Jesus enough. I think we get very nervous about what Jesus describes us and what he actually said. Because 
Um, you know, the fear that we focus on good is God, but if we're not focusing on good, it's not God. And that we go to the dead. But I'm thinking that's the choice that we have. We want to do this act to get to heaven, and then we have to sit and take the punishment. To me, that is what heavy weight is. Mm. And to take upon that, there's a lot of heavy weight to sit and get And if you're thinking a bit more philosophically as well, you know, a narrative rather than a table. Let's not say what Jesus achieved in a table. Let's tell the story of who Jesus is. And then that, it's a lot more powerful than we give it credit for, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Kevin, what just, I want to go back to the fact that I know a lot of the promotion to healthcare, a lot of the commercial buyers, e.g., Uber uh, and others, are getting out of nursing homes and who are buying into them. United and Vicare, and they are expanding that just, at such yeah, a rate yeah. that it's almost exponential. Yeah. So, and they're now actually having services inside the nursing homes for people who wish to attend. So, you're getting multi faith services now being delivered in nursing homes where they wouldn't have been done before. And they're using the TV as a PowerPoint presenter mm. and they're giving services. So that's that's starting, yeah. and and the those who are out to make money, some of the both banks and other organisations are now pulling out. They kept, they're not making money. They make money out of the first 10, 15 years as depreciation, then they're out because it's not enough money. They're not about caring. Um, this this is advancing sort of bank. Yeah. I was thinking about my son's church in London. They actually visit it now. I think they really got to do it. But they visit it. Yeah. You know, on a Sunday. That's a small group. Yep. Yeah. And that might not be everybody's cup of tea. So I'm not suggesting that. But what's interesting that Dr. Ernest has said, because we listen to it, that often uh, uh, people do really appreciate uh, somebody kind of. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know, no, you don't have to push it. And I think that as the church needs to actually think, which I think is an opportunity, yes. um, that the some of the things that people might want prayer for or whatever it is doesn't tick the boxes in right Christianity or right. Yeah, 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 but and yet that's the starting point. Absolutely. That people need that, like we're saying, the personal touch and the um because people are not being you know, and yeah. we're watching screens or whatever. Yeah. But it's more, but I'm, I'm interested in the fact that people often want to be afraid. Yes. And yet, they might not agree with anything Christianity says, but they somehow or other want to still be afraid. So what is it? And there's something in people that need that. Absolutely. And I think, I think it's Absolutely. such an interesting sort of thing. Absolutely. It's a starting yeah, yeah. point. That, mm -hmm. um, that horrible crash in Bristol, yeah. that Christian family got involved in that. It's inspired a That's about forgiveness. Yeah. Well, that's a prison drug. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because well, that, yeah, anyway, that's, thank you for your participation because these, this is why we, we gather together to participate with one another, not just to summarize a book and put it on a table so Alan can remember it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But thank you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. Um, hang on, I'll just stop the sharing. I'm going to stop the recording.